I was like, okay, Lord, I don't really believe in you. And I'm just trying this, but if you're real, please come into my life and reveal yourself to me. And then that whole week, I was just searching out videos like apologetics. And I was like, oh my gosh, how did I not know these things? <laughs>
as an inspiration in terms of they can see your passion to grow. And I, I just feel watching it, there's a lot of authenticity um, and just a lot of, um, yeah, passion. I think that's a, a, a comment that a couple of people made is that your passion is contagious. So I think that's amazing. That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, I think your topics are really good. And honestly, I do think your equipment and the quality of your videos are also really good as well. Uh, when I pick ASMR videos to listen to, I feel like, you know, first is personality and then it's kind of the equipment. Yeah. You have both, so. Oh, um, that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> so I can totally see it. And honestly, I feel like it is a God thing and I feel like your success is 100% just you being obedient and following his will. And so I think that's awesome. Now, I... I I'm sure everyone who listens to Christian ASMR has come across your channel, but can you tell us a bit about yourself and maybe an interesting or unique fact about yourself as well? Yeah. Well, my uh, full first name is Gabriella, and nobody ever really calls me that except my mom. Um, I am half Chilean. My mom is Chilean, and my dad is from Alabama, and... I currently live in Alabama. I have my whole life. Um, I am a gymnastics coach. I used to do gymnastics for a long time, probably 14 years, and my mom owns that gymnastics business, so it's a family business, and yeah, that's kind of a gist, and I do Christian ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So you've been doing gymnastics a long time. Um, uh, I don't do it anymore, though. Oh, okay, so you're, you're yeah. retired. Yes, I just coach. <laughs> oh, okay. that's really cool. Um, now, again, I know everyone has, has seen some of your videos at least, so uh, maybe if there's people who haven't, can you just maybe describe your channel, uh, your, maybe the purpose behind your channel, um, maybe um, the, the motivation, etc. Um, well, I originally started a, like, secular ASMR channel uh, probably a year ago actually um, when I was still like maybe two months old as a Christian um, and I just didn't feel I didn't feel any fruits coming out of it it didn't it just felt like it was going nowhere so I stopped um, and I wasn't even really listening to ASMR at the time either but eventually I decided to look up Christian ASMR, and I found a couple of cool videos, and I was like, wow, why didn't I look this up sooner? And then slowly I was started to think, you know, I have all the equipment I need. Why don't I just start a channel? <laughs> so that's what I did. I originally called it Christian ASMR, very generic, um, and <laughs> then I changed it to daily bread ASMR because I wanted people to come to it and be fed um, with truth and not just regular sounds where there's like thousands of other uh, ASMR channels that do a great job of just um, high quality ASMR videos but there's nothing no true substance to it so I wanted people to come and get fed the word of God and learn more about Jesus and see an example of my faith working through the channel Wow, that's that's awesome. It, I, I'm so curious. What it, what is the name of your secular channel, and does it still exist? Oh no, I deleted that. Oh. <laughs> like, I probably kept it up for a month. Uh, right. I had some strange videos, like of my cat purring <laughs> and eating Cheetos or cheese sits in my car. <laughs> Stupid stuff. It was called sensitive sounds. Oh, okay. yeah. That's, wow, that's, I can't even picture you doing that. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> I should send you the thumbnail of one of those videos. hundred percent. I think you should share it for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I honestly, like, I feel like as a Christian and, you know, being part of this Christian ASMR community, there's so much to cover, to talk about. It's endless, but I feel like as a secular ASMR artist, I don't know, like, I feel like, what do you talk about? Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's it's tough. Yeah. I mean, that's why it's going in so many different directions now. There is a heavy 
sexual side, heavy new age side, and right. a lot of just regular old sounds. So it can go any direction now. And I hate to go off on a tangent, but I that's a hundred percent so true. Is because that's and that's why I enjoy Christian ASMR because you know it's safe. Like if you fall asleep, you know what's being implanted into your subconscious is it's yeah. not something that's gonna and i feel you're right i feel like there's such a heavy new age side and there's you know a, a sexual like asmr as well and i feel like even the channels that maybe didn't used to go on that side maybe for views or for likes i've, I've started to do that yeah. as a tactic yeah, definitely yeah. definitely i was scrolling through uh, just like my recommended, and I came across uh, an ASM artist reviewing another ASM artist OnlyFans account. I don't know if you know what OnlyFans is, but um, it's like where you pay to see videos of a person you enjoy, and most often it's like sexual content, like explicit sexual content. So wow. I was just saddened, mostly yeah. just sad that people are doing this. Absolutely. You know, like yeah. They don't have to. Yeah. yeah. Water. Yeah, no worries. I have my tea, so. Um, but yeah, I yeah, it is very sad, and I'm really happy to be a part of this Christian ASMR community yes. because my interactions with all of you have been only positive, um, and so it's been awesome. And I noticed you also said that at the time you were two months old as a Christian, and I know I'm I'm going to ask you this later, but I will just preface. I just want to say that or ask, did you, did your family grow up Christian? Uh, no, my mom, she was raised, um, Catholic and she went right. to a Catholic school, like all female. And for the first part of my childhood, probably until I was 10, maybe, cause I did have first communion, uh, in the Catholic church. Um, we, we did go occasionally, but not faithfully or regularly um and then my parents got a divorce got a divorce and we stopped going pretty much um and then my family slowly started becoming more liberal and liberal. <laughs> so right. i mean they still are right now and it's very hard at times to um speak what's really on my mind or i just keep my mouth shut and don't say anything because i don't want to start anything um so it's been hard on them uh for me transforming so much they obviously don't think they don't attribute to the power of god they just think i'm brainwashed which yeah. is really sad and, of course yeah, yeah. well I, I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing about your testimony because i always find you know for me i grew up in church and i i rededicated my life later but i always yeah. find testimonies that are more like people become christians despite yeah. their families or later in life i find them so compelling so i look forward to that but going back quickly to, uh, to creating your channel you kind of walked us through the creation and the origin story of of from what was it sensitive sounds to christian asmr to daily bread, <laughs> daily, bread. <laughs> daily bread asmr yeah right and uh, i guess that leads me into how how has the process been um what are some positives and negatives about maintaining your channel? I know you mentioned um, with the sudden growth, there was kind of some internal pressure you put on yourself. So how has it been for you? Um, it's been surreal. Um, my family uh, kind of teases me and like, like, you're famous now. When can we be on your channel? <laughs> Like, when are you going to do, like, regular ASMR videos? And I'm like, in my head, I'm not going to. I'm sorry. But no more cheeses in the do. car. No. <laughs> um, but it's been good. Uh, my hair just turned on, but I'll keep going. Um, I, uh, can, can you review me on the question? I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> no worries. I, I was just wondering, um, how has it been for you maintaining your channel? positives, okay. negatives, and, okay. and the pressure that comes with it. Yeah. Positives is that I really love seeing comments where it's an atheist or um, a lukewarm Christian who who just like enjoys the content for what it is and they're drawing closer to God. Um, negatives. I had so 
many racial comments on the video that I did with my fiance. Uh, horrible, nasty comments. Uh, just like bashing my fiance, calling him an animal. So that was, I had to disable the comments on that video. Um, but That's yeah. And it's, it's, it's crazy that when you take someone's like identity out of it and you can be anonymous, they kind of, what people are holding back come out. I, I'm so sorry you went through that. That's brutal. Yeah. Yeah. It did. It affected me more than it, it affected him. He was just like, yeah, the world's going to be the world. And, you know, it is what it is, you know, just pray for him. So wow. just have to remember to pray and wow. keep my eyes focused on Jesus and not their negativity or their racism. Yeah. Christy um, mentioned that as well because. Oh, really? Yeah, she, she was in a, her husband was African American and she experienced comments like that too. And I think honestly, you guys just being women to experience comments that I would never experience. And oh. I think sometimes the comment section can just be maybe the worst, just the worst. Yeah. I do get a lot of uh, atheists. They're kind of funny to me. Where like, they'll say, Oh, I can't wait to listen to a fairy tale and fall asleep. Or, you know, like talking about how the Bible's fake and they just make jokes about it. And, yeah. Like, I used to think exactly the same way, so oh, I know where sure. coming from. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, um, what, uh, uh, what would you say are maybe some future goals or objectives you have for your channel? Um, I've been thinking about getting a Spotify playlist of some of my uh, just like the audio of my videos so that people can listen to it without the visual aspect. I, I'm, my first priority right now after this, not immediately after this, but is to put out my testimony video. As some of you guys might know, I did originally film a testimony video, but my family made me take it down for some of the things I said. They were really offended, um, but I'm going to just tweak take some of those parts out and just rephrase it a little bit you right. know, and try to respect their wishes because it was very, very hard for me to take it down. My pride was like, no, but I respected them and I'm just going to try again because <laughs> yeah. the Lord is really pressing it on me, like put your testimony out. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you had to take it down. How long ago was that? Um, I don't know the exact date, probably months ago oh. maybe four yeah that's that's so difficult um well i was gonna ask you this later but so would you say that it's fair to say your family and friends know about your channel um yeah i tried keeping it a secret for a while um but once i hit around 500 subscribers i told one of my sisters because she kept seeing me get the microphone and the zoom cam or the um what's it called gopro and she was like what are you doing and then i finally told her and then i didn't tell anybody else but she told everyone in my family uh and then they started snooping around looking at my thumbnails and they're like oh can you do something like this for a photo for me and uh, yeah but they found out pretty quickly that yeah and i guess that does complicate it when you're especially as you said you don't come from necessarily a christian family right so yeah yeah, I guess that would be, and, and you want your testimony to be authentic yeah. and respectful. So that's a, that yeah. is a, a tight line to walk for sure. Definitely. Well, that is a perfect segue because my next question is literally, how long have you been a Christian? And can you walk us through your testimony in terms of, now I know you're making a video on it, but do you have maybe the Coles notes, the short, the short version for us? I can definitely try. Um, I've been a Christian for almost two years. Coming up in July uh, will be two years. Um, I, I guess I could attribute most of it to my fiance because he was a Christian. His family was Christian. Um, and he pretty quickly within the first few weeks of our relationship, he would invite me to church. And in a way to make sure that I would go, he would drive all the way to my house, pick me up, drive me to 
church and then drop me back off. Um, so he did that for a long time. And then I, I would just sit there in church and, um, try to read the words, the lyrics on the screen, but I didn't really understand what they meant and I was like why are these people lifting up their hands they are so silly and stupid um, <laughs> and then I eventually got kind of tired of it and I was telling my sisters you know like I don't know if I want to keep going to church with Kenny but I don't know how to tell him and so I finally brought it up to him and he was pretty understanding but he was really encouraging me to seek truth and to um like, look, like, seek it, and I, I definitely wasn't, I promised him that I would look into other religions and look into the Bible, but I never did, and then probably a month later, I would, I went to church again, and they were talking about warfare, the preacher was talking about warfare, and it kind of scared me, because I, at the time, I didn't understand spiritual warfare, I was kind of taken about by the wording, and and I was like, okay, this is it. I can't go anywhere. <laughs> this is too weird. Um, but um, then my fiance, or my boyfriend at the time, uh, he had a conversation with me in my bedroom and was like, I don't want to spend the night with you anymore. Um, kind of implying that he didn't want to have sex with me anymore. Because at the time, obviously, we were having sex, even though he was a Christian, he was kind of lukewarm. Right. Um, and that was a big part of my relationship with him as like, that's what you base it on when you're not in Christ, you base it on physical things. Um, and I was completely distraught over that. I was like, how can we even have a relationship if we don't do this activity? Right. Um, and then we, that turned into a conversation about God and I was bashing him at throwing all these accusations about God, like, how could he allow evil, blah, 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 like, some people have never heard about the gospel, what's he gonna do with him, um, and then something that night, like, was stirred in me, and, like, I hugged him that night, I, I said, like, Lord, or, no, I told Kenny, um, I feel like you are, um, part of the reason, or you are drawing me closer to God, and I don't know why I said that, and then that night, I looked up a video, how to believe in God, that's what I searched up, and it was Charles Stanley, or somebody, and he was right. saying, put your faith in Jesus, and then that night, I, I prayed to the Lord, I was like, okay, Lord, I don't really believe in you, and I'm just trying this, but if you're real, please, come into my life and reveal yourself to me, and then that whole week, I was just searching up videos, like, apologetics, and I was like, oh my gosh, how did I not know these things, <laughs> and then I was keeping it all a secret, I wasn't sharing any of these videos, I wish I could have, because they're very compelling, um, and then that kind of just sprouted into my faith now, those, those apologetics videos, um, but, I don't know if I could say that I was saved then. That was just like me having knowledge, but not necessarily trust in Christ. Right. Um, so that probably came about a month or two later after that. Yeah, so that's the short version, I would say. <laughs> wow. And so after that happened, was there kind of a moment where, or was it just kind of a gradual thing where it just kind of progressed into more of a relationship? Yes, after that month of learning about the Lord and seeing all the evidence um, outside of scripture and all the philosophical reasons for why God exists, um, that's when I started seeing changes in myself, like I would no longer want to curse, I no longer felt the desire to listen to secular music. I started feeling convicted about having sex. I um, started questioning why I had my hair so short because I used to have a shaved head on the sides. And I started questioning my intentions about like, okay, I have my head shaved because I kind of want to look like a boy. I like being androgynous was sort of a an idol for me because like I'm, I'm pretty muscular, I have strong stature, and I enjoyed looking different from 
some other girls. Um, so that was kind of another change, just changing the way I dressed and changing my hair, growing it out. Um, and one of the more recent things that happened, probably about six months after that, was I started reading. I never used to read. Um, of course, I started reading the Bible, but I started reading other books, um, Christian books mainly. Yeah, exclusively, because I was just so hungry yeah. <laughs> for learning. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and during this time, had you started your ASMR channel, and did that come way later? That came about a year after, like, I asked the Lord, or after I started having full trust in the Lord. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, so what would you say in terms of how your life was before and how your life is now? Like, what would you say is different, kind of just if you were to check who you were then and, and who you are now um, about yourself? Yeah, definitely the things I just said, uh, all those changes in me. I used to be very concerned about social media. I started slowly progressing. I had an Instagram account and I started posting um, more revealing pictures. I don't know if I could say that, but I was putting way too much effort into the posts that I was putting out there on Instagram and I was constantly checking like, okay, how many likes does this have? Is this post doing well? I didn't have that many followers, so like 300 or 400. Um, but I was so concerned about what other people thought about me, but I never, never showed it to others that I cared that much. Um, and just like the whole sexual side of me that, I mean, there are so many lies I believed about sexuality. Um, yeah. There's just like, my thought process was different. I was thinking an abortion as well. Like I, I used to have conversations with Kenny, like, okay, what if we get pregnant? Um, and at the time he was okay with abortion, but pretty quickly after I got saved, I was like, uh, -uh this, this is not it. <laughs> not it <laughs> well that's so. yeah i appreciate how open you are too because i think you know it's easy for me i don't show my face so it's easy for me to be vulnerable but you know for you to be so vulnerable and, and share so openly i think it, it's so helpful for so many people so I, I appreciate that yeah that's really cool and this is my favorite question and I'll, I'll ask you this because I just, I'm so fascinated with this aspect of, of Christianity and the spiritual life. So do you have any kind of really cool God moments um, that you've personally experienced or, or have seen? Yeah, there's always one that sticks out in my mind, um, probably about four or five months after I was saved. Um, I was... I'm in college still, I'm graduating this semester, but I was doing a class and the the class was about to finish and then I looked at my calendar for the day and then I saw that I had a test and in two hours that I didn't know about and I was, you know, that feeling when you are caught or you know something's wrong and all the blood rushes to your face and you feel choked up and you're like, how did this happen? How could I forget about a test this important? <laughs> and and I, I've also experienced that for sure. Yes. And, and the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, just trust the Lord, give it to him. And um, then there's also like doubts like, why, why, Lord, why did you allow me to forget this test? <laughs> um, <laughs> and then uh, the class ended, and I was like, okay, I'll ask the person in front of me, because I know he's in that class that we're about to have the test in, and I, I told him, like, I forgot, I forgot we have a test, and then he, that person was so gracious to me and spent the whole two hours helping me to study, um, and he walked with me to the class, he, like, was being my own, like, teacher, basically, and on the test I got 104, I got all the questions right, <laughs> plus the bonus points, and even on top of that, the person who helped me, I used to have a thing against him, because he was in one of my previous classes, and I thought he was so annoying, I did not like the way he looked, 
Uh, yeah. And the Lord changed my heart on him. I was like, okay, thank you for showing me that these judgments I had about this person were unnecessary. They were rude and it was sin. And he corrected me in that way as well. So that, that always sticks with me that he, the Lord just like turned that bad moment into something amazing. Yeah. And the second thing that happened more recently was in church about a month ago. There was a couple with a baby. They came up to the altar, um, and the, our pastor was saying, talking about how this baby was a miracle, how they um, thought the baby was going to die in the womb, uh, but it got born nonetheless, and but now the baby has like heart complications and whatnot. Um, and so the church was praying for the baby, the pastor was praying for the baby, and uh, the baby was like being held by its father and started lifting up its hand like in worship. And I was sta I was in the front row, I was like, oh my gosh. And I tried to look up to see if the cameras were capturing this and they weren't. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I just like started crying. I was like, this baby knows the Lord. Wow. <laughs> this baby like uh, can, uh, it just knows who its creator is. So yeah. I was just shocked that it was raising its hand like so obviously to the Lord. <laughs> So that some so people cool. might hear that and not believe it, but I, that's, that's not what I saw. <laughs> Just fresh from heaven, eh? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's really cool. That's awesome. Um, and now this was also a question from a comment, but uh, it's on my, my 10 questions here. And it's, you know, so you've, you've gone through such a, a drastic change. Um, you've, you've, you know, lived your faith so, in such a good, a cool way. So what keeps you passionate and inspired as a Christian? Um, I think a part of it is this YouTube channel. I, the last thing I want is to be making content and not actually practicing what I preach. Um, that just like does not sit well with my spirit. So this kind of keeps me motivated to, to make sure that I'm right with the Lord before I start speaking into other people's lives. Um, I'm also just like in a place where the Lord has me really hungry to be more obedient, to learn more about Him, and to just to, to be a light in the world. So I always feel very convicted sometimes when I'm interacting with my family, and I walk away from an interaction knowing that I was not representing Christ. So those instances always push me further to like really know the Lord more so that I can share the Lord with others better. Right. Yeah. yeah. I guess it's true. Eh? The, the channel does keep you, it's almost keeps you accountable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And uh, I think this was another question as well, but um, what does a day in the life of Gabby look like in terms of incorporating God in daily habits and routines? Yeah. Well, when I used to have more schoolwork, I would wake up earlier, probably around 630. Um, and the first thing I'll do is either, I have like a few options, so I'll read uh, my Bible. I'll read um, this little book I have that's it's called God's Promises, and or I'll read a devotional, but mostly um, nowadays, since I don't have a lot of schoolwork, I wake up at like 8 or 8.30, so, <laughs> but I still read, and I pray in the morning, that's the first thing. Recently, I've started trying to put my phone under my Bible, so it's not the first thing that I reach for the day. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> about my day, eat breakfast, and then whatever time frame I have between morning and work, I'll either work out or just relax because at around two o'clock I go to work and I start lesson planning, um, getting ready for um, coaching, and I'll do that until 7.30 p.m. and then I go home and fiance comes over and he will uh, talk with me for about 30 minutes and then the last 30 minutes together we will read the bible together right now
now we're in Genesis chapter 25. Um, we'll read and pray together, then I'll go bye-bye, and I'll send a boy, <laughs> and then I'll pray some more right before bed. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, that's, yeah. yeah. And that's every day. Pretty much Monday through Friday. Saturdays is a little different. Yeah. Right. Well, that's awesome. And that is, all, that's the last one for my, you know, the questions I sent you now. Okay. Uh, I do have a, a bonus round. And for this one, in theory, it's supposed to be a one word answer, one sentence answer, but do not worry if you go off on tangents because it's totally fine. But I do have some questions for you. And number one, I'm so curious. Do you watch your own videos to help you fall asleep? No, I don't. I actually have a fear of watching them because I always, after I publish my video, I'm like, uh oh, did I leave in a blooper? Because in every single video that I've made, I burp at least once. I haven't actually have a blooper video of me just burping. <laughs> it's kind of <hilarious. laughs> but, yeah, um, like, like that. I haven't. I don't know if I should. Maybe. <laughs> you haven't posted it yet. <laughs> I haven't posted it yet. Okay. It's really embarrassing. Um, That's awesome. So yeah, I freak out. I'm like, did I leave it in? <laughs> or, you know, just random stuff. But I always freak out about whether or not I edit it properly. Um, but no, I don't listen to myself. But okay. if I had to, it would probably be just like a straight scripture reading. Um, yeah, one of the books. And honestly, everyone says the same thing, and I'm the same way as well. Once it's once it's on YouTube, that's it. I don't think I'll never open it yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question, though. Do you have a f okay? This is kind of two. Do you have a favorite kind of video to make? And okay, we'll leave it. We'll start with that. Do you have a favorite kind of video to make? Um, one of my favorite videos to make was um, finding your identity in Christ and um, uh, renewing your relationship with God. So just like, thing, oh, and the uh, deity of Christ. I really liked those three videos because I put a lot of work and it was like my own Bible study preparing for the video. So I enjoyed just like the studying beforehand and then making a video about it, yeah. So if, if, if someone had to come to Daily Bread ASMR and just watch one video that you've made, you'd recommend one of those? Yeah, I think so. Probably okay. the Deity of Christ one, okay. even though I wish I could have done it a little bit differently, but yeah, that one. Right. Yeah. Or John, uh, right. reading the first five chapters of John. Right. Um, what about, is there a kind of genre or type of video you like to make in terms of, do you like, like, reading scripture or your own Bible study? Like, what do you enjoy the most? Um, like, personally, like, not making videos. Is that what well, you're asking? Um, well, I guess, I guess personally, in terms of you making them, like, do you have a favorite video, type of video that you like to make? Um, just pretty much what I said earlier just ones where it's more topical where right. i can um put more of my own thoughts into the video because right. sometimes i feel like it's a little bit dry when i read um like an entire book i feel like i could put more of my personality out there and put some of my thoughts and explain like these confusing verses right here like i want to jump in and explain them to viewers so they aren't confused but yeah i like ones where i can expound more on for sure. verses yeah for sure uh favorite christian band i don't really have one actually i do like trey mclaughlin okay. um, i don't know if you've ever heard of him he doesn't have like super high quality videos he, he just like there's a phone recording uh the choir and whatnot they have a lot of views so you could probably check them out but i probably listen to his band the most okay. yeah. uh, do you have a favorite Christian song um, I really like at the moment take it to the Lord in prayer by the Oakwood Aeolians I think that's who did it but it's really beautiful 
was just a choir and the piano and it always gives me chills when I listen to it. <laughs> That's cool. I'm going to check that out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, favorite Christian speaker that you like to go back and listen to? You? Oh, probably um, Mike Winger. <laughs> He's not necessarily, well, yeah, he is a pastor. So, yeah, Mike Winger. Perfect. He's got a YouTube channel. Okay, perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, would you recommend any Christian book? You said you started reading some books. Is there one that you'd recommend to people? Um, the one that I was like in love with for a while um, was Mere Christianity. Uh, okay. Right now, I'm kind of in love with Blue Like Jazz because it really convicted me and changed my heart on a lot of things. Um, and I recently read one called Parables by John MacArthur. So I know that's three books. It's not one, but <laughs> yeah, there's the rules are very flexible. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it's okay. Um, what denomination is your church? Um, I used to think it was non-denominational, but then I realized it was Pentecostal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what translation is your Bible? I mostly read out of the English Standard Version. Okay. What is your go-to ASMR channel, um, Christian or non-Christian or both, for you to fall asleep or relax? Um, probably. Okay, the first channel I found was uh, Glitter Muffin, but she's changed it to Dust and Grease now. Oh, okay. Uh, I, yeah, so I found her, and I really enjoyed her content, and um, so I'll watch her from time to time.
it's not actually, um, it's, um, it's, uh, it's on VidAngel. They have their own app and they're streaming it on YouTube or coming out with season two, but it is probably the best, uh, show I've ever seen about the life of Jesus and his disciples. And it always, like, fills me with the Holy Spirit and it just gets me going. <laughs> I really, I really just praise the Lord when I watch that show. Um, and it gives me faces to think about, like, when I'm reading, I can now picture the characters and it's just, like, it's more tangible in my mind um, now because of that show. I'm going to yeah. check that out. We're, we're, yeah, my wife highly, and I, highly recommend it. Now, well, we're going to find it because my wife and I are in between shows right now. We always go back to the office as a filler because that's our girl. Really? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, we're, we're, we'll check it out for sure. Um, this one's a, a pretty, pretty uh, good question too. And that's, um, how do you live out your faith when kind of your family is, is not really on the same path? Um, normally, the first thing that comes to mind is the scripture. Um, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. And that always helps me to remember, okay, I'm on the right path. Uh, keep on standing firm for the faith. Keep on living for Jesus and keep on praying for your family or for my family, you know, um, to not give up on them and to, to keep on living and letting the light of Jesus shine through me. Um, but it's kind of when those tough moments come where my family is attacking me and trying to put me down or make me question my faith, it kind of ends up strengthening my faith because I know that that's supposed to happen and it's right. recorded, it's, it's in the Bible that that's going to happen to us. So it's like a confirmation. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so true. And I'm going to read the next one because it, it's really thought out, well thought out. So I'm going to read it. Um, and this one's, that's got multiple parts to it, but I see okay. a, a kind of a pattern developing in some of these questions. So I'll just read it. I would love to know how you maintain strong faith in a world where faith is seemingly fading all around us and where Christians are not looked upon very positively. How do you stop longing for the past and manage to keep yourself looking forward with God in your heart? Well, I always remind myself of or I remind myself of who I was compared to who I am now and the, the same people who hate Christians now. I was once one of them and I have to remind myself that these people are misled. Satan has a grip on them and they are blinded just as I once was. So I just have to remind myself that they, they still need time for the Lord to work on their hearts and to just keep on learning more about the Lord. If I just stop learning and stop pursuing the Lord, it's not going to help them at all. So I don't know. I feel like I could have answered that better. It's a, little, <laughs> it's a hard question, but no, it's, it's, it was good. I, I feel like the gist of it is, and a lot of these questions is how do you maintain your strong faith in the midst yeah. of obstacles, right? And the yeah. first one, it was in the midst of, you know, a family that doesn't believe. And now and this, this one's talking about in society in general where Christians are being demonized. And how do you, you know, even what seems right in our culture, how do you stand up for what you know to be true? Well, I... Um... Back, back to the question of like my daily life, um, I, I guess I forgot to mention that I'm constantly listening to uh, videos that will strengthen my faith. Like if I have a question or doubt, I will look it up um, and find a video that will help me understand understand what I'm not getting. Um, I really enjoy Mike Winger's content and Sean McDowell. Elisa Childers, um, a whole 
bunch of other channels that just like keep me strengthened because it just always comes back to like there is a sound reasoning behind the gospels there is sound reasoning behind god and i just go back go back to those videos sometimes if i need to to remind myself that this is real i'm not crazy yeah yeah and uh, if you don't mind me asking when you before you became a christian what how did you and i guess because i grew up in it my whole life so i've never known the other side but how did you see christians like when you when people brought up christianity or you see people like objecting morally or like how did you view christians i the first thing that would come to mind is a stupid um and not knowledgeable um just mean and <laughs> not understanding like um or self-denying which is partially true you have to deny yourself to live right. for christ but i didn't understand it fully um i used to mock people who would abstain from sex i used to mock people who wouldn't curse um yeah so not good things my mind did not right. think highly of christians well i know that you, yeah you wouldn't have been alone either right mm -hmm. um yeah uh there's there's two more um what how can i get to know god's word more and then understand what is right for me to do by him and his word so i guess what they're saying is how do I understand God's word and then apply it to their specific situation? And I wish I knew what specific situation they're talking about, but <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I used to have that same question too, um, but it's really just being faithful about reading the word every single day or as much as you can, um, because if you constantly fill yourself with the word of god the holy spirit is going to bring it to your remembrance so when a situation comes up he's going to be like think back to this scripture this is what you should do um or if you're still confused take it to the lord in prayer and he will give you the knowledge and the wisdom of what to do in that situation he's not going to forsake you and leave you abandoned so just continue to build your relationship with God. Yeah. yeah. And I know that um, you, you recently became a Christian. And, and um, I, I know that, you know, when I rededicated my life, like I was such on the spiritual high when I started making my videos. I was yeah. on such a spiritual high. And I, everything was just, you know, spiritual and exciting and and awesome and it still is but at the same time there's a tendency to fall into you know lukewarmness yeah. right to become lukewarm so mm -hmm. this person's asking how do you kind of stave that off how do you avoid becoming lukewarm that's a great question because that is it is sort of a fear of mine that I will become lukewarm um, because I know a lot of older women who talk about, oh, you're in the honeymoon phase and right. it's going to wear off and right. it makes me slightly upset. We're not upset, but just like, come on, people, this is Jesus. Don't right. miss your fire. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I have to stay in reality too and understand that once I make a family, things are going to be different. Um, once I start having more responsibilities, it's going to be harder to balance um, God in life. And I just have to remind myself to always put God first in everything. And thankfully, I have a wonderful fiance who is doing that currently. And I think we're going to help each other um, to, to continue doing that. We try our best to keep our relationship God-centered, but I don't have all the answers about how to not become a lukewarm Christian. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Hey, that you won't be. <laughs> I, I Lord would keep you. Yeah. yeah. And I think I think you really you nailed it when 
you said, you know, keep going back to the resources that inspire you, right? If you have yeah. a certain speaker that, you know, inspires you or you are inspired by a testimony or whatever it is, keep feeding yourself, keep yeah. st- staying in your word, right? And, um, and surrounding yourself with other people who oh. are on fire for, for the Lord will give you that fire too. So don't yeah. just become recluse, <laughs> like reach yeah. out to others. Yeah. Find, yeah, find people that are just as passionate and it will sharpen you and challenge yeah. you. I honestly, I've had friends for so long and then we went abroad for a while. <clears throat> and um, even in a short time, some of the people we met that were on the same spiritual level, it was such a deep relationship because you know, you share such a bond with people yeah. who are just as passionate. So find people to yeah. surround yourself with. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, that is amazing. That's all the questions I have. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, hopefully we'll do it again one day. Yeah, and, that'd uh, be great. <laughs> I hope everything goes well. And uh, I'm looking forward to see you know, where your channel goes and the success you're having. And I know God's using you in such a good way. So keep it up. And uh, that's awesome. God bless. God bless you too. I can't wait to see where your channel goes as well. (laughs) 